So in today's video, we're gonna do something for the pure maths people. So I'm going to attempt to show you the concept of mathematical induction with a wild example, one crazy example, just to show you the concept behind it and using it as a proof for mathematical statements. All right, let's suppose you are in another dimension where superpowers are possible and you want to test this, this group of what was seven people to see if they have the super superpower of flight. You want to see if these seven people can fly. Here's how you are going to prove that. In this alternate dimension reality, there's the power of induction. What does that mean? It means if one person can do something, then the person next to them will be able to do the same thing. If he can fly, then he will learn to fly. If he, this person can fly, then this person will learn to fly. In other words, all you need to do to see if this whole group of people can fly is throw this one off the cliff. And if he flies, because there's the power of induction, it means that this person is going to fly, this person is going to fly, this person is going to fly, and so on. Because the power is induced to the person next to him or her, they would be able to fly as well. So just by finding out if one person can fly, you can find out if all can fly. Of course, if he falls well, that tells us, well, he can fly. You don't know if the rest could fly. So pure math students, I really want you to understand that all induction is doing is proving for the first event that the statement is true. We'll call that the basis. It's just proving one thing. And then we are using an inductive step. Inductive, how you spell that way? To show that if one is true, then the next one must be true. So we are so let's call this person K. If K is true, then the person that comes after K will have to be K plus one then that is true. And that would mean that if k plus 1 is true, then k plus 2 is also true, because k plus 1 plus 1 is 2, and so on, and so on. So in other words, if you can show that the statement is true for this inductive loop here that goes on infinitely until the series is complete, then all we need to do is start off with the first term in the series and prove this guy, and all the rest will be proven as well, based on this loop that will just clean up the rest. So, putting it in another way, induction is like a line of dominoes. And we are going to prove that the first statement is true by knocking it down. Boom. And once we knock down this, it's just going to chain react and knock down the rest of statements via the inductive process. Whatever you want to call it. That's induction day. Understanding the concept is half of the battle. So the next half will be practicing the mathematical method behind um, induction and doing questions and inductions over and over so that you get the hang of that whole um, three part, three step process in induction. And there are some different scenarios where we can use induction as well. So I'm going to do one example in this video. All right, this is a sweet example. Use mathematical induction to prove that 6n minus 1 is divisible by 5 for all natural numbers. N, pure maths, this is where it's from um, 2016, paper 2. So, remember, first thing first, we had to set up the basis where we're going to prove n is equal to 1. When n is equal to 1, we're going to prove that. And then the second step is to, to um, assume that n is equal to k. You set up this and you show this in working. And assuming this, you show that this would also be true. This is the inductive step here. Right? Now let me just say some places, let me show you to do this first and then do this after, it doesn't matter. Once you complete all these steps and show it properly. The first thing I do is show that when n is equal to 1, 6n minus 1 um, would be, we want to see if this is true. So when, is, when n is equal to 1, we need to put n up there, it's equal to 1, and see if it works out. So when n is equal to 1, that's 6 to the power of 1 take away 1, 6, 1, 6 take away 1 is 5, and since that's 5, um, well, 5 is divisible by 5. We want to prove it's divisible by 5 for all natural numbers n, right? So, yeah, it is. it does work for the first step, so now we just need to show the next part 
The next part is where things start to get um, antsy, but let me just finish up a little statement here. Statement is true for when n is equal to 1. So now we need to set up the premise where n is equal to k. Um, we are assuming that the statement is true, so let's just put that in um, a better term. 6k minus 1 is divisible by 5. So we are assuming, and this, this k should be a little up in the air. Let me not confuse anyone out here. So this k should really be up here. Yeah, so 6k minus 1 is divisible by 5. Um, so we are assuming that to be true. 6k minus 1 is equal to 5p. Now, where did the p come out from? Oh gosh, this is why I hate maths. Thing, thing, thing. So yeah, just backtracking. We are assuming that the statement is true when n is equal to k. So what we are doing is literally substituting k anywhere we see n there. You understand? So we are replacing the n with k right there. Right there. Um, and 6k we minus 1 we are saying that it is divisible by 5 we are assuming that this means 6k minus 1 is equal to 5p where did this p come out from simple this p is a, a member of the set of natural numbers so you have like 5 times 1 5 times 2 5 times 3 and so on so that all 5 10 15 20 25 30 all those numbers are divisible by 5 so we'll just say that p is the set of natural numbers so P is like, P could either be numbers like 1, 2, 3, and so on. And this is just a nice way of saying that P belongs, P is a member of the set of natural numbers. So, 5 times 1 would be the first um, iteration, if you may, of that. Alright, enough explaining on that. So, this last bit here, 6K is equal to 5P minus 1. I just rearrange and bring the 1 across here. Well, it should be plus 1. 6k is equal to 5p plus 1. Yeah, sorry about that. So 6k is equal to 5p plus 1. This, this, I set up this for the future. And you'll see what I mean when I go on. But I hope you understand up to here. I just did this and rearranged this for the future. I already knew that what's going to show down. Next thing we need to do is the n is equal to k plus 1. So we need, to, we need to show that this one actually works. We need to prove that n equal k plus 1. Um, when n is equal to k plus 1, the statement is divisible by 5. So, statement 6n minus 1, remember that's the statement, it will transform to this, right? Now, I can rearrange this if I know my indices, and that will actually be 6k times 6 to the power 1, take away 1, which is basically 6 into 6k, um, 6 into 6 to the power of k minus 1, right? Get that? I hope you follow that. By the way, in the CIS game manual, your little um, algebra and thing had to be up to par to be able to do this comfortable, comfortably. Um, recall that, remember this, remember this guy, I told you I'm setting this up for in the future. This is the big step here. I'm going to take this and put that into that. And you will always take something from the air, uh, from the, this part here, the n equal k part where you're assuming something and you reach down here. You, will, you are always going to take something from this line and put it into the next part, into the third step. That is how you complete that kind of inductive loop there. So this 6k, I'm going to replace it with something I knew already from when n is equal to k. As you do more examples, you'll understand how to do that very efficiently. So recall 6k is equal to 5, um, 5p plus 1. Yeah. So you're putting your 5p plus 1, right? Good. Uh, I didn't make the mistake continuing here. Because remember, it was 5p plus 1, right? So, so going on, um, expand that. I'll get to the expand that. I'll get 6. Um, remember, this part here came from before, right? I replaced this part with what I knew from before. That's the key there. That's, I could stop teaching this part, right? I could, I could just stop teaching it, right? Right there. That's the key right there. Anyhow, so going on, 30, P plus, uh, let's break that down. In the end, I am, I'm going to pull out a 5. Why am I pulling out the 5? Because remember, my aim is to show it's divisible by 5. So if I have a 5 multiplied by something here, and I know that this P is a natural number, so therefore this is always going to be like a whole number plus 1. So, so this is no fraction or anything. So it's always, this is always going to be like a whole number or natural number multiplied by 5. It means that this whole thing is always going to be divisible by 5. A nice way to write this is like this. So 
this would always be a multiple of 5 since p is a natural number um, and since this is um, a multiple of 5 it means it is divisible by 5 so the statement is true for n is equal to k plus 1 hence by PMI what's PMI the principle of uh, mathematical induction the statement is true for all natural numbers of n so let's just recap what happened here again sorry sorry capping i prove the statement is true for when n is equal to one i set up a statement for when n is equal to k that was the setup then i prove that the statement is true for n is equal to k plus one given that n is equal to k by substituting piece of this into this so remember the dominoes if i'm saying that the statement is true for anything that comes afterwards and i prove the first one then all are true wow look how that looks <laughs> i hope this i hope at least one person understood something i did there are other types of questions that we can prove using mathematical induction so i think within the next two or three videos i will post up another one on mathematical induction and i'll just do maybe two or three more questions till then don't forget to subscribe and i will see you later